Hello everyone, Vincent Aiello here, founder and host of the Fighter Pilot Podcast. Today is December 16th, 2019, and I am excited because Paramount Pictures released another trailer for the upcoming Top Gun Maverick movie, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great movie. Everyone should go see it. What I want to do today is offer you a few thoughts on what I see based on my experience flying the F-18, so why don't we get straight to it? All right, this trailer just came out this morning and already well over 280,000 views. I'll just offer a few remarks and comments on what I see. If you would do me a favor, look in the notes, the description of this trailer, uh, feedback, if you will, or reaction before you comment because it's oftentimes that I say something incorrect and I come back and change it. Haven't had a chance to look at this too many times, so I just want to offer some initial thoughts. Right away, in this opening scene, you can see some pretty aggressive maneuvering by Tom Cruise. All the flying scenes, I'm told by my friends involved with this movie, are real. Tom Cruise did log quite a bit of flying time in the backseat of an FA-18F. You can tell this is a Super Hornet by the dog tooth and the wings. And in this particular scene, he must be doing some type of training, because this is an instrumentation pod over on the right wing tip. We call that the TCTS pod. It's also known as the ACMI or TACTS, but these are also the blue laser-guided training rounds that simulate your laser-guided weapons. Now this is a CADAM 9X, it looks like, but that would also be available for you in training. Okay, so he's doing some pretty aggressive maneuvering. You can see the effects on his face. These are the vapes or the uh, vapors that are created when you are pulling a lot of Gs or high angles of attack in moist air. And right away, the trailer begins where the last trailer ended and that is with an F-14 flying into the scene and again I will comment that I was told that all the flying scenes in this movie are real so that certainly gets the blood going I'm excited to see what happens uh, with this movie and its storyline and of course there is some commentary here that I'll just uh, rely on the actual trailer itself for you to take a look at uh, but here we have a pilot that looks a lot like Maverick in a single seat F-18E. And they're always going to be wearing clear visors. A lot of times when I reacted to the last trailer, everybody said, wait, why isn't he wearing the joint helmet mounted queuing system? Well, not only is he not wearing that, but he's also wearing a clear visor. And that is so we all know who is in there. And they had the real actors, of course, in the aircraft. So this would be an F-18E single centerline drop tank on there. They really did paint one in those colors. Now, I don't know where they think we're going here, if this is old or new, but in the state of California, we've had a helmet law for the last 20 plus years, but again, we won't know if that's him. All right, so this is the front gate to North Island, and we do have an aircraft on the stick out there. It's an A4 Skyhawk, so that's pretty intriguing to see what we've got here. And having posted a handful of flying videos on my own YouTube channel recently, I can tell you this looks to me either they're going super fast or they sped that up just a little because it's usually uh, unfortunately not quite that exciting, although it is when you're flying in it. But when you show a video of it later, uh, well, that could be real speed, but they're definitely maneuvering pretty hard and that's what you want. All right, now we are in the hangar bay of an aircraft carrier. Presumably the Theodore Roosevelt, which is what they did a lot of the uh, filming on. You can see in the hangar bay, your aircraft will always have their wings folded. In the case of the F-18, the F-14 way back when would have had its wings uh, full, uh, slid back, swept back, I should say. And you've got your different colored jerseys. We've talked about that on other shows here that I've done. And let's see, we just got regular Super Hornets. Looks like an E and an F and a few others. Don't see any growlers. And all your folks here are going through a briefing as they introduce what's uh, about to happen. Handful of serious looking people here. Usually we don't get dressed uh, right away in a brief like this. You would wait and put your flight gear on later, uh, but that's all right. And he's already sweating, so it must be pretty hot on the carrier there. Not really sure. Some aggressive maneuvering there, pretty exciting. That to me looks a little close for what we would normally do for training, but what we've learned from the folks that wrote the book for the first Top Gun movie, you had to be really close in the filming of these movies in order to make it compelling for the audience. Otherwise, it was just a, a dot or a blip out there and it was really hard to see what the other guy was. So they had to get closer and closer as they did, for example, the 
first Top Gun filming where they passed the quote MiG-28s for the first few times. They had to do that well inside the normal uh, training bubble. So that to me looks a little close as well. This, I'm not sure where it is. Usually we use all these different uh, time zones and a room like this in a maybe a staff room of some sort. It doesn't really say on the, wait, what does that say? United States, I guess. I thought maybe it said test for a second. Uh, but you can see it says Top Gun here on his name tag. Looks like VX-31, that is an actual squadron out at China Lake. So perhaps he was involved with some tests for a while. And then this fella has two stars, and of course nobody at Top Gun is that high. Although the Nautic or Naval Air Warfare Development Center commander is a captain who turns into a one star. So not really sure if he got brought to the Pentagon here or what's going on. We'll find out when the story comes. And yes, they're called Orders Maverick. All right, summer, I'm told June 26th-ish. I'm really looking forward to this. I'll be one of the first guys in the front row to go, and I think everybody should go. I think it's going to be a great movie, and we'll certainly be talking about it. All right, here is, looks like an F-18 making an approach onto a carrier. Not a whole lot of aircraft here, but yeah, maybe their uh, flight is all airborne, the, uh, the wing, I should say, the, uh, the wave for that particular session. Of course, you got to have your uh, elevator up scene. That's pretty standard. Looks like this could be an F. That could be an E just based on the canopies. And don't really see a whole lot loaded on right now on those particular aircraft. But here you have now a couple AIM-9X on your wingtips and a couple looks like could be 1,000 or 2,000 pound laser guided weapons under the uh, wings here. All right, Tom Cruise, you betcha. Now these are your turkey feathers, as we like to call them. Now in Afterburner, everyone who has ever washed your car at home with a hose without a nozzle on it, you know that if you put your thumb over the nozzle, the water comes out faster. Well, it's same for the engines in uh, a jet engine. In this case, what you have is at lower thrust, when you're not in supersonic, these nozzles will actually close and then that principle that makes the air come out faster with subsonic flow, like the hose I was telling you about, well, that reverses in supersonic flow. So in afterburner, you'll actually get more speed out of the nozzles when they open, which is what's being depicted there. Just do that again real quick. You can see that the nozzles open when the uh, afterburner's coming, and that actually gives you a little bit more speed. This is Tom Cruise in the back seat again of an F-18F getting real cat shot. And again, the clear visor lets us know it's really him. And some people asked me before about, hey, why are the straps hanging so far down? I'm told that his stature, I've never met the man, is a little bit uh, smaller than some. And that is actually not uncommon for the strap to come off the shoulders of certain people. And what happens in an ejection, you might ask? Well, the first thing that happens is an explosive charge retracts these straps into the seat. And that will then uh, allow the uh, straps to be in the proper place. So that is not totally uncommon. Okay, normally a clearing turn, or let's see, which way did they come off? Eh, they might have come off the actual, this is showing them coming off the bow, but this particular aircraft looks like it could be coming off the waist. All I'm trying to say here is a clearing turn, which is a turn right after launch, is to the left or port for us Navy people off the waist, but for like this aircraft coming off the bow, it would normally be to the right or starboard. Uh, the only time I've ever done that differently than as planned is when you are launching on an alert and then you ask the air boss up here on the island, hey, can I turn to the left? And he says, sure, because usually nobody else is launching. All right. Yes, masks are required from engine starts to engine shutdown, but then we can't see what they're saying and as much of their facial expressions. So here again, we have an E and an F. All right, different characters. We'll have to find out who all these people are. And that to me, once again, looks a little close, um, but we need to make it exciting. So you can see that that kind of throws them around a little bit. All right, this must be Maverick's hangar. He's got his real life Mustang in there and it's hard to see it, but uh, some of the older motorcycles, folks corrected me before on the different motorcycles we saw in the first trailer. Here's a Navy flag. I can't quite tell what that flag is, uh, but a lot of other memorabilia, as you might expect from a long career in the Navy. And he must have his P-51 involved in this. Of course, we have the bar scene. Of course, we have conflict, all the things you need in a movie to make it compelling. 
All right, this would be called a canopy roll. Uh, not something we normally do, but not sure why they'll use it, but it looks pretty cool. Here again, we have training with the TCTS pod and the laser guided training rounds. All right, some concern there. And it looks like we have, again, some drama with an aircraft, a little bit of uh, flame coming out the right engine there. Again, all real flying scenes. So looking forward to learning later how they did this with folks involved in it. And um, we go, of course, from an engine flaming out or having trouble to a, a um, funeral scene. And I was corrected last time. This is Fort Rosencrans up on the Point Loma Peninsula in San Diego, looking out over the bay side of uh, San Diego. This side is actually looking over the ocean side this time based on where the sun is at around sunset. All right. Someone's obviously upset about what happened. And here suddenly, here's that scene from the beginning again. Now that scene, by the way, people have asked before, what is that? Well, these are where your fuel vents are in the F-18 Hornet and Super Hornet. And sometimes on catapult launches, as well as on heavy maneuvering like this, it's not uncommon for a little fuel to vent, whether that is fuel venting or if they had the dumps on to make it a little bit more compelling, I don't know. Let's just take a look at that again. Yeah, that might have been some leftover uh, fuel dumping. All right, now, you're gonna ask me what all this is. I don't know. Once again, helmet law in California. Looks like Top Gun uh, Maverick here, our hero is involved in some kind of training or assessment to see if he's physically fit to go do what we're about to see here in a moment. Actually, wait, was that an Air Force guy? Let's check that out again. Like I said, I haven't looked at this too many times. Uh, nope, Navy guy. I guess they use the uh, green camouflage now. And now we have a surface-to-air missile being fired at someone and detonation very close. A lot of surface-to-air missiles have proximity fuses. So if it detects that it is close enough to its target, that it thinks it's within its lethal radius, then it will detonate. It doesn't actually have to physically hit the aircraft. And a lot of flares can help, but depending on what kind of missile, if it is a radar guided, well, your flares aren't going to do you any good, but it does look cool. Looks like he flies out of that just fine. And, of course, our stinger now this time is this particular aircraft. All right, this is Naval Air Station Fallon, Nevada, and that aircraft I have no idea, but I look forward to seeing what that is when the movie comes in the near future. And, of course, good old Maverick, he's not buzzing the tower anymore, but he's raising the roof, so to speak, here. And uh, you can see the effect his low altitude transition has both on the people here and on the roof of this little security building. And of course, he looks back with some disdain. So, sounds like he's still earning his call sign. All right, June 2020, awesome. All right, folks, well, once again, I'm sure I said something wrong. Feel free to read the remarks first before you leave a comment. And June 26, 2020, I'll be there. I hope you will be as well. Once again, my name is Vincent Aiello from the Fighter Pilot Podcast. Check us out at fighterpilotpodcast.com. And for exclusive content, head on over to Patreon. Look for the Fighter Pilot Podcast and consider supporting us there. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.